Hello, my name is Carlo Bergamini, Dynamics 365 Business Central and Dynamics Nav Project Manager and Senior Consultant here at Western Computer. In this video, I'm going to talk about deposits, cash receipts. So let's take a look at deposits. Deposits is just another method of cash receipts. You could do cash receipts journal or you could use deposits. Deposits makes it a little bit cleaner and easier to use. So in deposits, I'm gonna click on new. I'm gonna get the next available number by just hitting enter or tabbing through. I'm gonna select which bank account that I'm gonna make the deposit into. And I'm gonna enter my total deposit amount. In this case, I have 4,055.23. And of course, I want to be sure that I post it in the correct date. The date and the amount should match the date and the amount that goes to the bank for reconciliation purposes. So when you get the month end reconciliation, it's much easier to reconcile that know that you deposited $4,055 on May 8th. That's all you need to do in the header. Down in the lines, obviously the payment comes from a customer. So I'm gonna choose count type customer. I'm gonna choose which customer number I received the funds from. Do you get the description? Document date, as you see, defaults to the document date up on top. You can change this date to match your check date. For example, as Trey Research sent me a check, the date on the check may have been May 2nd. So I'm gonna put in May 2nd because that was the date that he wrote on the check. And then from there, my document date of the payment, and my document number is actually the check number that I received from him. So now I have the actual check number, the date of the check, and of course, I'm gonna enter the amount of the check, which I received. 809.76. Now this is great, I have this. Now if I was to post it as it was, then certainly I can go and it would create a customer ledger, but it'd be going in as an open payment. So the payment goes to their account, but because I didn't apply it to any invoices, it just goes in as an open payment. And once it goes in as an open payment, you could actually apply it to an invoice later on within the customer ledger entries. But again, it would go in as an open payment if I left it alone. So to apply it, I'm gonna to go to functions, apply entries, and this would give you, as you see, a list of all the open invoices for that specific customer. And we just happen to see that on this line, the very first line, that is my invoice of 809.76. So to apply that, I'm just gonna simply go to process, set applies to ID, and you'll see that the check number actually populates in here to say that this check number is going to close out and apply to this invoice. I just simply click OK, and now I know when I post my deposit, not only am I going to post a payment of 809, but it's going to close out the invoice that I told it to. Now up here, back up at the top, you'll see there's a reconciliation item, if you will, where so far my total deposit lines is only 809.76 for my total deposit of 4,055, which gives me a difference of 3245. If I was to try to post this deposit, it would not let me because the difference needs to be zero. This field has to be zero for me to post this deposit. It wants you and needs you to reconcile to your deposit. So let's do another line. So again, it's going to be customer. I'm going to choose a different customer. And I'll leave the document date as 5-8. That's fine. I'm going to leave the document type as payment. And document number, again, is going to be your check number. But if by chance this was cash, Obviously, cash doesn't have a document number, so rule of thumb is to do something like this, is to type in cash and the date of the receipt of the cash. So that way, at least you have some reference point, because again, this document number is going to flow to the customer ledger entry, and that document number has to close out the invoice, so it needs that document number reference to close out the invoice. So I'm going to make it for the full amount, 32.45. 47. I'm going to go ahead and now you see my difference is zero. Now I know I could go and post my deposit because I'm reconciled, if you will. The total balance is zero. I'm good to go. But I need to apply this again to my invoice. I don't have to, but of course I want to. So functions, apply entries. And now you see in this line, I'm going to go up to here, process, set applies to ID. But you see the remaining amount in this line was 3311 different than what I received in cash. So down here in the footer, if you will, it tells you how much you have to apply, how much you apply, available amount, and your balance. Now again, this balance should be zero. So why do I have a balance of 6623? Well, let's take a look over here. 
and sure enough I see payment discount possible so even though they paid us cash if you remember on May 8th the payment discount date was May 3rd they were supposed to pay us by the 3rd for them to take the discount but they still took the discount so you could either leave it alone and apply it the way it is and what that's going to do is going to leave the 6623 and the customer's account for you to follow up with the customer and tell them that hey you still owe us 6623 because you paid us a week later or x amount of days later so leave it as is leave it as the 6623 stays on their account as an open invoice and you could go after them to complete the payment or you have the ability to lack of a better word is to wipe it out and accept the 6623 even though they didn't follow the rules by paying by the third so to do that you have now the ability to just simply change the date to say either whether it's the eighth so now because today's the eighth and it says okay because it's the eighth i'm going to change it to the eighth so now the system says okay now it knows to allow the payment discount to be accepted on the 8th rather than the 3rd. So if you notice, I changed it from the 3rd to the 8th, and now my balance is zero. So what that's going to do is going to close out the invoice for 3311 by the 3245 and also send that 6623 to early payment discounts. Even though they may have not deserved it, you make that decision whether it's worthwhile to follow up with the customer or not. I click OK. My total difference is zero. I can go to actions. I can run a test report if I wish, or I could post or post and print. Post and print, obviously the printing will actually give you a register if you wanted an actual register. I'm just gonna go ahead and post it. And I'm done. Having a blank page is a good thing. That means my deposit got posted and I am good to go. Hope that helps. Thank you for spending some time watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all things Microsoft Dynamics. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks again.